everyone, thank you so much for watching. My name is Savannah, and if you're new here, welcome. Happy you stopped by today. In this video, we are building a penguin encounter building for some of the king penguins. This building actually isn't a part of any of my current zoos, and I, I know I know I've said, you know, I spread myself thin with different projects, but it's just how I keep myself interested in the game. Um, but I was searching for some inspiration and actually came across this really cool picture of the Detroit Zoo. They have a penguin building over there that has really cool geometric architecture. And if I do remember, I'm going to try to put a picture up there for you because I'm going to try going forward to show you guys the reference pictures that I'm using. I get lots and lots of questions on how I get inspiration, what I use to build. Um, and so I'm going to try to include those for you today. So hopefully I've remembered that I'm being a good YouTube content creator and the picture will have been up on the screen, but that's where the idea behind this build came from. However, I didn't feel like it was really going to fit into any of our current zoo projects we have going on right now, but being said that I loved the architecture so much, I wanted to try to build it anyway. So here we are on another blank canvas map, uh, open vast uh, grassland everywhere, just building another one-off project. So I really do hope you guys enjoy. Before we get started into the build itself, I wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. I know this video is coming out almost two weeks if I can get myself in gear here and uh, get it released for you guys. Uh, two weeks into 2021, so I'm a bit late, but that's okay. Uh, the thought is there. <laughs> I've taken the past couple weeks to do some major relaxing and also reflecting on the channel. Um, you guys, if you followed the channel, you know that I finished my school semester and there was something about the fact that I've spent uh, the last eight years doing things on somebody else's timeline, um, you know, for example, papers, tests, exams, things like that, that I'm having to study for and get things turned in on a certain time. So the fact that I'm done with that uh, is a major just weight off my shoulders. And I took the last few weeks to just kind of not do anything I didn't want to do and kind of just relax and organize around my house, spend some time with my family um, and my pets really. And, and I'm still working and everything. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I still have been doing some YouTube-y things. So behind the scenes, uh, preparing for a couple other projects and um, I mentioned reflecting on the channel. I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of how the channel grew in 2020. And with my schedule opening up a bit, I really wanted to put some time into improving upon and thinking about the channel and my content as a whole so that in 2021, we can move forward and just get better from where we came from. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, so apologies that it's been a couple weeks since the last video, but I'm hoping that the time between videos is really going to shorten up because I am doing my best to streamline my process as far as editing, um, devoting some more time to just playing, and then also diving into a couple more games. So stay tuned because I am going to try to release uh, some slightly different content on the channel. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Back to the build though, I am really pleased with how this one turned out in the end, but boy, Oh boy, the struggle with the water is a real challenge. So uh, you've heard other content creators mention it, I'm sure, but the fact that this aquatic pack came out and all of us, I feel, are realizing that we really don't know how to use the water uh, as much as we thought we did. <laughs> I think I've cut most of it out, but shortly after creating the walkthrough tunnel that you'll see me build uh, now-ish that I'm working on, um, I decided let's try to make it uh, a little bit different. Let's make the water a little bit deeper because I realized that it wasn't deep enough for the penguins to do their diving animations. I probably spent an hour fussing with it, taking away the path, emptying out the water, recreating it, and it just, ugh, it wouldn't work. I couldn't get it to go. So scratched that, went back, kept it how it was uh, because I just wanted to avoid that, that it was a nightmare altogether trying to fix it um, and, and, you know, go back and adjust it. So that's the one major thing that I have learned uh, is that you really have to get your water exactly where you'd like it, leave it there because after you uh, put the water in and you start dealing with paths and barriers and, and things like that, there's no going back. At least there's no going back unless you want to delve uh, into a very frustrating week-long endeavor uh, that may not work out in the end. So 
that's why I say I'm happy with how it turned out in the end. Um, and I do get a couple workarounds for the diving mechanics because as you'll see in some of the cinematics, I do end up getting these penguins to dive because that is one of the major things that came with the aquatic update is the fact that these animals all do their deep diving. Um, but they have to have at least, I think it's four meters of depth that might be five um, in order to swim. And they have a little bar on their welfare uh, tab that says, you know, deep diving requirement has to be at 100%. So there's been a couple videos, I think, I know Rudy's one of them that made a kind of a water tutorial video and it kind of just explains the fact that yes, they need this deep diving water, but it doesn't all have to be in one body of water. If they have an area that is deep enough and large enough for them to, to fill their deep diving requirement, they will in fact dive in the other bodies of water. So that's essentially how I got around this, uh, which basically means I had a plan for this building. It was a certain size and I kept having to add on to it, adjust it, uh, and keep tweaking and modifying it until it worked, uh, so that the water would work out and so that they would dive. So I ended up making, you know, a little pool in the front when you come in, the tunnel that you walk under, um, a, a deeper diving kind of narrow, um, tank that has the feeder in it. And then there's kind of a backstage area that that really is what requires, or I'm sorry, what fills their requirement most is that back area of the deep diving water. But then because of that, then they do dive in the front. Um, so one of the biggest recommendations too, really, that I have for you guys is, is really start with the water first, get it perfect with where you want it, and then don't touch it because it's a nightmare to try to fix it. And then second, you can really use, and what I should have done and completely forgot despite knowing this trick myself is use that live feeder as a gauge. So put that down before uh, you start moving on from the water because it'll tell you if it says ready to use, it means the water is in fact going to be deep enough um, for the animals to dive in. Now it might not be enough water, but at least you know um, it is deep enough and you can just add uh, square footage or uh, square meters worth of water more to make sure you get to that 100% deep water requirement. Now you can see here with working on the tunnel, making the tunnels under the water is not something the game is necessarily actually made to do. So it is kind of just uh, a little bit of a loophole that we're getting around where we're tricking it just enough to think that the path is under the water um, or I guess out of the water and it's not really. So I did kind of struggle with this tunnel in specific being somebody that is quite a perfectionist and I like nice, straight, clean lines that the fact that the water, I'm sorry, the fact that the path edgings were so uh, zigzaggy and jagged um, did bother me. And in the end, you know, it's okay. We cover it all up with rocks, but it does squish in that path a bit and make it kind of narrow, um, which I guess works because when you're walking through there, maybe it'll it'll seem a little bit more immersive where you're, you're actually going in this tight uh, cave tunnel with the water above you and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, you can see here, you know, the rocks kind of sticking a lot out through those walls. I would have liked it a lot more if I could have gotten uh, a nice straight clean line in there, but it was shortly after this that I started to go back and think, oh, maybe we can, you know, maybe I can make the path wide and that way I can bring in the scenery pieces closer and it would still be a narrow path, but I would hide all that jaggedy rough edges and things like that. And it just didn't work. It was uh, a huge regret and, you know, backed up and just went forward with it. It was one of those moments where I just had to say, it's all right, it, it looks good. Um, it might not look perfect in my mind, but it looks good. So I left it. Another thing that I'm adding right here is up top, I was thinking about, um, you know, if the keepers had some area that they wanted to walk up over the water, maybe throw in food for the penguins or something like that. You know, the, the idea behind that is that if they went up there and people were walking down below, they could throw out some fish or entice the penguins over to the, the tunnel in some way for the guests to view them. So speaking of these cute little guys, when you think about where penguins live, where is it that comes to mind? 
for a lot of people, the answer is going to be the Arctic. You know, the they live in the Arctic with polar bears and snow and ice, and that's where penguins are from. But um, it's actually not correct. Actually, king penguins and other polar species of penguins are found on Antarctica and the surrounding islands where polar bears are found on the opposite end of the world in the Arctic. The major difference between these two places, the Antarctic and Ar the Arctic, or Antarctica and the Arctic is really just geographical. The Arctic is an ocean that is covered in a layer of thick sea ice and surrounded by land, whereas Antarctica is an actual continent uh, that is covered by a very thick ice cap and surrounded by the Southern Oceans. So when you think about uh, stereotypical, you know, penguins and polar bears together, it's actually false. And that's why one of the reasons why peng or, uh, polar bears are suffering so much from the loss of ice and snow melting and, and glaciers melting is because the Arctic is that made up of really thick, basically floating ice and glaciers on the ocean where they do a lot of their hunting and that is getting shrunken by all of the melting of the ice caps and things like that. But if you played the game uh, at all, you might have also noticed that the baby penguins look completely different from their parents. They're very adorable. They're all covered in brown fuzzy down feathers. And those brown fuzzy fuzzy, brown fuzzy feathers, <laughs> a little bit of a tongue twister there. Those brown fuzzy feathers are their own uh, down feathers. And it can take up to a little over a year for a chick to fully grow in its adult waterproof feathers. And those are the black and white feathers that everybody's used to seeing. Because of this, baby king penguin chicks are actually referred to as being semi-altricial. And altricial meaning that that young is completely dependent on the parent for care. So semi-altricial means that the baby penguins are not able to feed themselves and they're not able to keep themselves warm without the support of their parents, but they are able to walk and move and get around just fine without the help of their parents. So a completely altricial young would be something like a hummingbird chick where they're born with their eyes closed, they're not fully formed, they don't have all their feathers, they're unable to leave the nest and therefore are completely 100% dependent on their parents in order to survive. The opposite of that, the opposite to altricial would be precocial young. And so an example of a bird species that has precocial young would be something that uh, is like a domesticated chicken where their young are born with their eyes open, they're ready to run around, they're ready to eat on their own. So yes, they may rely on their parents for protection, but for the most part, they're able to uh, walk around, eat and see and, you know, stay warm, kind of the basic things you need to survive. So precocial and altricial are just two of the words used to describe the type of young that, uh, that the bird species have or other animal species have, really. It's just fancy words of saying they either need their parents' help or they don't need their parents' help. One of the ways that I like to remember those is that altricial means they need all the help they can get, meaning they're dependent on their parents. Um, and then the opposite, opposite to that being precocial, that they don't need any help. Um, so I thought that that was pretty cool that Planet Zoo actually included that in the game where the baby penguins are brown and fuzzy and covered in their little down feathers and they can't actually swim. Um, of course, they do eat the food that's provided by the keepers and they don't have to rely on getting that from their parents. Um, but I thought that that was a really cool aspect that, that Planet Zoo, uh, the developers paid attention to is that they can't swim. Those fuzzy down feathers are not waterproof and if they were to get wet um, or go in the water, they, uh, they certainly would get very, very cold and not be able to stay warm. I also think it was pretty cool that Planet Zoo decided to include king penguins rather than the emperor penguins because emperor penguins I think are the ones that everybody when they think about the big penguins that walk on their hind feet and um, well I guess their only feet right because penguins don't have four feet uh, but walk upright and kind of waddle around with the yellow on their chests and things like that everybody thinks of emperor penguins um, but king pe penguins are very very similar they're just slightly smaller than the emperor penguins um, and they don't have as bright brightly colored chests as the emperor penguins do. Uh, but I thought that that was a cool uh, choice. I would be curious to know why they chose king penguins over emperor penguins. Like I said, they're fairly similar, um, similar species, but just with a few slight differences. 
Overall, I think the penguins might actually be my favorite animal that was included. It's between right now the penguin and the otter. Um, I really can't decide which one I like better. I, I'm... I like them both because they kind of seem like goofy, mischievous, funny little animals, um, but I love their animations. Like I was watching the penguins uh, traverse around the habitat that we're building right now um, because I did make sure that they could get every single place and, and make sure they can go up and down all the rocks that we're placing. But they, they included animations where they'll slide on their bellies and waddle around. And um, I just thought that that was really, really cute. And of course, the otters are cute too. Um, so that's where I can't just decide uh, which one really is my favorite out of the two. The rest of this build really is a lot more rock placement, a lot more rock placement, <laughs> and uh, working on the exterior. I did a good job this time, pat on back for me, uh, that I didn't do the roof first. I did all of the interior first and then put a roof on it. So I kind of minimized uh, the um, need for me to go into the building, kind of move the camera around at those weird angles. I still had to do that just a bit um, because I, I added some interior support beams and things like that. And I, I do believe I cut that out just because the camera work would have made me dizzy, um, kind of made me dizzy doing it. So I didn't want to include that for you guys. Um, but yeah, we get the exterior done. And then I actually end up with this blank empty space uh, on the left side of the building. And my thought there is I actually turn it into an exterior penguin habitat. As of right now, it's implied because I didn't really want to bother with the fences and getting all that to work um, because it, it is a fairly small space. But my inspiration behind that actually came from SeaWorld in San Diego. Their penguin building on the outside, they have, I think they're like rock hopper or African penguins or something like that. Some, some penguin species that doesn't necessarily live in a super cold environment and they are outside the building. So you go into the inner part of the penguin building and kind of go through, they have this little people, people mover that you stand on and you kind of get to see them diving and swimming and, and things like that in the water on the inside of the uh, habitat. And that way they can keep it all temperature controlled. But when you come out, there's some penguins outside that are kind of running around and you can look at too. So that's what I added over there when I get to it. This right here that we're working on is that behind the scenes uh, kind of just because I needed extra water for the deep diving. That's what I'm adding here. And I do go back and kind of slide some of the rocks in more because as I'm uh, adding the rocks so that the penguins can traverse everything, I kind of enclosed on the water space just a little bit. So I do have to go back and kind of scoop those in, um, but that's really all I'm doing here. Um, so anyway, yeah, so outside I did use a couple blueprints in this build and the links to those are down below because now that I'm saying that I'm totally drawing a blank on the name of the creators that made those but I definitely want to give credits to them um, the shade structures particularly um, I believe Beyond Drew TV has used those in his Thornton Hills Zoo I think he used them um, but they're just some like canopy use of the fabric. Um, I did switch out the poles on those uh, to, to match the build a little bit better, but the, the blueprint did come from another creator on the workshop. So again, the link will be down in the description below if you want to check that out. Um, but other than that, like I said, a lot more rock placing and then some more architecture. Um, the outside of the building was a bit tedious to do just because it involved so many pieces. And on the front, I added that detail of the, like almost like the building is tiled, kind of like the Detroit Zoo, the reference picture that I was looking at. Um, but that did take me quite a while. Um, this entire build is done with off the grid pieces. It's entirely built with just the plaster piece. Pieces. So that did make it a little bit easier, um, but because the roof has a, a couple different pitches and, and angles to it, it did take me a little bit of finessing in order to get it all to line up and look nice um, without some, you know, you either sometimes when you're building these and you get things to overlap, one side looks good, but then the other side has like corners and bits sticking out and things like that. So it did take me a little bit of finessing and, and finagling in order to get it to look good from both sides, which is where you'll kind of see on the inside there's some like drop down parts that I turned into um oh gosh what are they called there's there's a name for them um uh like in in um like bulkheads I guess is that what they're called they're just yeah they they hide stuff 
<laughs> yeah, that's the that's basically what they do is when I'm hiding things I'm making these boxes and squares so that it kind of looks like it's part of the building um, But you don't see all those little sticky outie pieces. Does that even make sense? I feel like I've gone on a tangent and I've likely lost everyone because I know what I'm talking about But the ability to describe it correctly is escaping me. So apologies if I have lost you um, I did want to add these two sun roofs uh, skylights into the building because I do find that the lighting in Planet Zoo is one of my favorite aspects of the game. And in terms of showing off your build, it is important to get those uh, shadows and, and different lightings and stuff like that in the screenshots and then also, you know, cinematics when I'm showing it off. I want those shadows and things um, so that it kind of gives some dimension, gives some um, variability to the, uh, the screenshots and the cinematics. Before I let you guys go for this video, again, there are cinematics at the very end, so if you wanna check those out, you can go ahead and skip there now. Um, this video was so much fun to make, and I really enjoyed uh, building this all together. It was a bit of a challenge. It did take me a while, quite a while, um, but happy with how it turned out overall. But like I said, before I let you guys go, I wanna thank everyone who entered our creative conservation contest. Um, we got some fabulous entries and I'm so, so excited to show them off for you. At the time of recording this now, I actually don't know who the winner is yet because it's in the middle of voting. Uh, voting ends for me as I'm recording this now, it ends in about five hours or so. And then I'll be able to tell who won. But it was so much fun looking through what you guys came up with, how you guys took uh, one set of rules, one set of guidelines, and kind of ran in different directions with it. So I'm super excited to show those off in the video. I have gotten a little bit of feedback on how the contest went so far. And again, it was the very first one that I held. So thank you guys so much for being so nice and supportive. And, you know, I'm always open to uh, uh, construction criticism and feedback and things like that. So we will definitely be doing this again. If you are interested in either just voting for the entries or participating in future contests yourself, the link to my description is down below. Go ahead the link to my description, the link to my Discord is down below, and that's where you'll have to join in order to be a part of the build contest. Um, so in the future, when we hold more contests, I really hope you guys will join because it's a ton of fun and I'm having a lot of fun holding it for you guys. Other than that, that is all I have for you guys today. Keep your eyes peeled for some more content, some different content. Um, and until the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.